at Parnaseca Arena on a Sunday afternoon in New York City. Big East women's basketball, a mid-season matchup between Creighton and St. John's. Both of these teams smack in the middle of the Big East Conference standings. Creighton coming off a loss at Seton Hall on Friday. St. John's won here on their home floor. The Blue Jays tied with Butler for third place right now in the standing. St. John's just a half game back in a tie with Seton Hall for fifth place. So a big mid-season game. And with that, we say hello. I'm Pat O'Keefe. Great to be joined again by the former St. John's star, Sky Lindsay. And St. John's big win over Providence here on Friday. Great meanwhile. Really good start to the season, but trying to salvage what has been their weekend in the New York metropolitan area. And Pat, Creighton is not, is not at all happy about their loss on Friday over Seton Hall. They've been receiving top 25 votes the past two weeks in a row. St. John's, they're trailing right behind them in the Big East standings, and they're coming off a momentous win over Providence on Friday, and they feel on their home floor they have what it takes to leave with an upset win today over Creighton. It was a big day here on Friday for the home team. First of all, the win, it was kids' day. That was fun at a couple of milestones. Alicia Cady scored her 1,000th career point, and so did Quadasha Hoppy, continuing what has been a terrific career here in Queens. The junior hitter, 1,000th point on Friday, that was huge. She leads the team in scoring with 17.2 points per game. She can score, and she can score in bunches, Pat. Always a lot of fun watching her play. Creighton, meanwhile, led by Jalen Agnew, preseason all Big East team. However, she's under the weather. She is dressed, she is on the bench. She's not in the starting lineup. If they are without her today, they're going to lose a lot because there's so much that she brings to this Creighton team. Yeah, she is a flat out dominant force on any floor she touches, averaging 23.2 points a game in the Big East play. And leading the confidence, 51 threes made this year alone. Coach Tardamella must pull out all the tricks defensively to stop her today. If she is available, that remains to be seen. The third member of our broadcast team this afternoon, let's say hello to Anna Dominguez. Now defense has not been a strong suit for the St. John's team so far this season. I spoke to Coach Chardamella before today's game. He told me a key to this game is going to be forcing turnovers against this high-scoring Creighton offense, considering Jalen Agnew has been putting up almost 20 points per game. Guys? All right, we're about set to play ball here inside Parnaseca Arena. Quadasha Hoppy, that milestone bucket here on Friday morning, Kids Day. She's in the starting lineup with Tiana England, Alyssa Alston, Alicia Cavey, who also went over 1,000, and Emma Nolan, one of a couple of St. John's players who's fouled out of that game on Friday. Creighton overall, 12 and 5, 4 and 2 in the Big East. And with Jalen Agnew coming off the bench, or at least starting the game on the bench, Kemi Sarda, they'll rely on her more than usual. Their second leading scorer on the season at just under 12 points per ball game. Jalen Agnew, 19.8 points a game, 6.7 rebounds. That is a lot of production on the bench right now for Jim Flannery's Creighton Blue Jays. England quickly into the front court after St. John's controls the tap. KB had a strong second half in the win against Providence on Friday. Creighton, meanwhile, got off to a really dismal start in their loss at Seton Hall. They were also playing an 11 a.m. Eastern time tip. Seton Hall scored 32 points in the first quarter and Creighton was never able to get back into the ball game. And so I know coach for Creighton is going to make sure his girls are focused defensively, especially right now in the first quarter so they don't have deja vu like they had against Seton Hall. He's a good one, Jim Flannery in his 18th season on the Creighton bench. First offensive possession for the Blue Jays. Here's Sarda, their leading scorer in the starting lineup, takes it right to the basket on their first trip down court. And Sarda, she's the only other girl for Creighton that averages in double figures besides Agnew. And so with Agnew not on the floor right now and not at her healthiest, Carter, you can see she knows Sarda, she must step up and put some points in quickly for her team. Must be something in the water in the Big East this weekend because on Friday, St. John's second leading scorer, Leilani Correa, wasn't able to play because she was under the weather as KB is tied up by Gracie Griglione and it will be Creighton Ball. So 
A couple of empty trips down the court for St. John's to begin. Chloe Dwarak over to Griglione for three and a quick 5 nothing start for the Blue Jays. Griglione, she's a six foot one forward, but she's not afraid to step out and take that perimeter shot. And so defensively, St. John's, they see now they must come out and, and defend her. Not a big scorer for Creighton. Averages just over two points per game as Nolan is able to answer on the other end for St. John's first points. And that's always a nice look for both coaches when your six foot one forwards are stepping out early in the game and knocking down trifectors, Pat. And a good sign for Emma Nolan because she had a tough game here on Friday against that strong interior presence of Providence. Dvorak passed on the open three. Off the mark from the wing is Sarda. Offensive rebound though and another chance. Olivia Elger swings it over. Elger spotting up, but Nolan steps up to tie up Chloe Dwarak and it'll go back to St. John's. And nice job that time by Nolan to slide her feet and move over and help the guard. And Creighton, they're known to keep good care of the basketball. They don't turn the ball over much. And so a team that offensively, they're always under control. Second fewest turnovers in the country. 10.7 turnovers per game. They do an excellent job of taking care of the basketball. There's a lot of that in the Big East because that's something that Villanova has always been known for under Harry Peretta. Dwarak brings it into the front court. Here's another open look for three. This one's off the mark. So Grigley on one for two from downtown to begin this game. Hoppy trying to drive around Sarda does, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play. Hoppy, she's crafty. You're going to have to slide your feet in that time, cut off the baseline, giving Hoppy the baseline, and she's going to find an angle, and she has great body control to find a way to finish those tough layups and take the contact to earn and ones. Michael Parham checks in for the first time for Jim Flattery's Blue Jays as does Dee Dee Pryor, a freshman from Urbandale, Iowa. There's Parham, 6'2 from Burnsville, Minnesota, averaging just over two points a game in 17 appearances. So Flannery to the bench early, Hoppy finishes the three-point play. And after Creighton scored the first five points, St. John's has scored the last six. Sarda draws the double team, kicks it out to Parham. Pryor, not a ton of minutes this season. Big opportunity for the freshman, and a nice job on her first field goal attempt. Pryor, beautiful pull up, nice soft touch, and you can see she's been working on her mid range this season. Kadeja Bailey takes it to the basket, misfires on the first, follows it up, and we have our third jump ball of the first quarter. And that's a layup, Pat. Bailey's going to have to make in today's game only a sophomore, but has the highest percentage, field goal percentage right now for her St. John's group because she takes the right shots at the right time. And that one was the right shot, just couldn't finish. So on the alternating possession, it goes back to Creighton. Scott, you get the idea that we're not going to see a lot of Jalen Agnew today because Jim Flannery's already sent three subs into the game and she has not gotten off the bench. And I can imagine the 5'11 senior is not happy that she's not feeling her best because this is her senior year and she's been playing top basketball, a top in the nation with scoring. And so a young lady that wants to be out on the floor. Great look ahead for Hoppy who beats everyone down court. That's one thing you do not want to allow St. John's to do. They love scoring in the open floor, and that time an easy bucket, way too easy for Hoppy with that fast break layup. And Hoppy off to a good start with five early points here in the first quarter. Just underway from Jamaica Queen, St. John's an eight to seven lead over Creighton. Here's a Creighton turnover. Johnny's looking to push again. Bailey to the basket and an offensive foul. And Bailey a bit out of control on that one. Didn't really have her good possession of that pass before going up for the layup. And you could see great job taking the charge and good call by the ref. Yeah, Rachel Saunders holding her ground. She took the charge. Kadeja Bailey's first foul.
Peyton Brodsky handling the ball now. Just checked in a moment ago. Here's a three-point attempt from the left side, and Rachel Saunders knocks it down. She's 38% from downtown on the season. And a bit of miscommunication defensively for St. John's that time. You saw Coach Tardemel on the entire bench screaming when Saunders was left wide open for that three. They double-team Hoppy. Here's Alston, who was so good in the first half of that win over Providence on Friday. That was halfway down before rimming out. Little pace here for the Blue Jays offense. Nice pass back for Sarda. Back-to-back -back threes for Creighton. Timeout St. John's. The Blue Jays have a 13-8 lead. Quick timeout for Joe Tardamella from the St. John's bench. 4.22 to go in the first quarter. Johnny's down 13-8. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Back here in Queens, and Creighton, an early 13 to 8 lead over St. John's inside the Creighton huddle with Jim Flannery, their 18th season as their head coach. And some adjustments needing to be made without Jalen Agnew seemingly available for this game. Others have to step up, Sky. Temi Sard has done a good job so far with five early points. Yes, I could imagine Coach Flannery gave her a little pep talk before this game because he had an idea Agnew probably would not play many minutes if at all today and the 5'7 junior starter having a great start leading the team right now with five points he averaged 11.9 points and right on track to perhaps beat that average and she might need to today. Coming off an 82 to 70 loss at Seton Hall on Friday and Flannery told me before the game that the 11 o'clock tip is certainly not easy. I was describing the game that you and I called here on Friday morning, Kids Day, St. John's and Providence. Not the prettiest first half of that game. It takes those players a little while to get going with those early tip-offs. Yes, yeah, a time. tough game, but a big game for St. John's. They did win on Friday, and in front of a large crowd of the school kids were out there to support St. John's that day, and a nice momentous win for St. John's to come into today's game. Well, a nice play drawn up in the huddle by Joe Tartamella because Alyssa Alston out of the timeout, the bucket and the foul, and a chance for a three-point play. Alston, her first bucket so far on the game, and that's what makes St. John's so special. They have four different girls averaging in double figures, and so at any moment in the game, someone else can step up and score in bunches. Finishes that three-point play. St. John's back within two. To your point on Friday, it was Alston in the first half, Tiana England in the third quarter, and then Hoppy and KB both got hot down the stretch of that game. Here's a long three, and Peyton Brodsky knocks it down, and that's three consecutive three-pointers for the Blue Jays. Nice look back for KB driving to the basket. 
Oh, a nice okay. job by KGB. That was not an easy catch, and she had her feet ready and two steps up and did not even put the ball on the floor in that possession. Nice backdoor cut, and Dee Dee Pryor beats the St. John's defense there. You have to love when you see your forward able to keep her eyes up and give nice passes to, and find guards that are cutting towards the hoop. It's a nice job. And Dee Dee Pryor, the freshman from Iowa, only plays four minutes a game. She's already got four points here in the first quarter. You always wonder who will step up when a star is out of the game. That looked like the identical play right there, by the way, as Kadeja Bailey cut towards the basket. And you know, you don't see that much or even enough in women's basketball, that backdoor cut. People really don't look for it much, and you can see already it works if guards just look for that backdoor cut. Baseline drive comes up short for Saunders. Bailey handling it coast to coast for Kadeja Bailey, and the Johnny's back with a point. And nobody stepped up to stop Bailey. I think that she's not known for going end to end herself and taking it to the hole. But that time, the sophomore showing us her skills and her end to end speed, Pat. The Big East leader in shooting in terms of field goal percentage, 60% coming into this afternoon's game. Less than two and a half to play here in the first quarter. And here's. Leilani Correa jumping the route. That might have been off of Correa's knee. No, they're saying it will stay with St. John's, but a good defensive play by Correa, and it will be St. John's basketball. Correa, we mentioned, did not play on that game on Friday, was not feeling well. And you can see just now, just not at the normal speed you would see her at, and that allowed the defender to catch up to her. And just is probably going to play today, but not at her 100% she usually does. A six foot freshman from Manchester, New Jersey. Let's see this play again. Let's see if it did hit Correa's knee. It might have hit off that right knee. Doesn't matter. St. John's basketball. As KB drives against two defenders, gets her own rebound, follows it up, and the board is cleared by Carly Batchelor. Creighton getting lucky that time defensively, again allowing St. John's to drive that baseline. Here's another look from the wing just off the front of the rim by Brodsky. Alston thought about firing away. Instead, it's Hoppy. Alston splits the defender, switches to the left hand. Pretty move. She is a crafty senior and right there found a way to get an open lane because of her crossover and ability to hang in the air just long enough and switch her hands to her left hand for that layup. St. John's has scored six straight points to grab a one-point lead. Looking for more here. Hoppy's open on the left wing. Driving and losing the ball as she went up against Peyton Brodsky, and it's out of bounds off of the Red Storm. Brodsky that time slid her feet, was able to stay with the quick guard of Hoppy and cause Hoppy to turn that ball over. There's a confusion with the substitution for Creighton. So they're going to throw this ball in again. It looked like Dee Dee Pryor went to the Creighton bench when she wasn't supposed to and then jumped back out onto the court. So for a moment, they only had four players on the floor. Pryor's getting big minutes today for somebody who's only played 48 minutes this season. She shouldn't want to leave the floor. Yeah, Pryor doing a great job and only a freshman, but as a freshman, you know it's not often you get these opportunities to really show your coach I can hang in big games like this, and so now's her opportunity with Agnew not on the floor. You take 20 points a game out of the lineup. It's got to come from somewhere. A deep three-pointer is off the mark for Elger. Pryor battling for the offensive rebound and keeps the possession for Creighton. And Correa was just unable to snatch that rebound down cleanly and Pryor at the right spot at the right time and only five foot seven, but got her hands in there and saved that possession for her team. Right here, both St. John's girls had their hands on the ball. KB doing a good job knocking it out of her hand, but looks like England may have kicked it out of bounds at the very end. Good job by our crew here at the BEDN for catching that.
Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. The first quarter that's had a pretty good pace to it. Here's Pryor from the wing. Long rebound for KB. St. John's will have 10 seconds to get a shot up. England quickly into the front court. Correa stops and pops and knocks it down. And the Johnnies take a four point lead, 22 to 18, after one. So a good start for Creighton. They led by five. St. John scores the final nine points of the first quarter and grabs a 22 to 18 lead after one. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. second quarter. Here's how the first quarter ended for St. John's. A 9-0 run, Sky, to take this four-point lead. Yeah, St. John's already has six girls on the scoreboard in the first quarter. An all-around team effort offensively for this team, and that explains that 9-0 run. Contrasting styles in that first. Creighton, a lot of their offensive damage from downtown. They were 4 for 10 from behind the three-point line. St. John's, meanwhile, getting a lot of their work done inside. Yeah, 14 points in the paint for St. John's. They've been attacking the rim, finding open lanes, and being aggressive, getting to the basket. And as for Creighton, they've been settling a bit for the long distance three. And so I want to see them try to attack and get St. John's girls in a bit of foul trouble. Leilani Correa hit that three just at the end of the first quarter extend St. John's lead to four, their largest of the afternoon so far, underway in the second. And again, Creighton's top player, one of the top players in the conference, Jalen Agnew, who we were told about a half an hour before tip today that she wasn't feeling well back in the locker room as KB extends the St. John's run. Agnew's on the bench in uniform, hasn't gotten into the game yet, and we're not 100% sure of her availability, but it doesn't look good right now. That's right, and St. John's taking advantage of the fact that Creighton does not have their star player in the game as of yet, and just slowly trying to open up this gap more and more. It's part of the game, it's part of the rigors of the college basketball season. Teams aren't always going to be at full strength, so when you go up and against an opponent that is without a top player, you've got to take advantage. But talk about Sarda again, seven points now for her, and I love the fact that she is doing all she can offensively to keep this gap as close as possible and keep her team in this game, and that was a nice pull-up a moment ago for her. Yeah, really stepping up in the absence of Agnew, and that jumper 
ended an 11-0 St. John's run. And a travel this time on the wing as Chloe Dvorak tried to drive to the basket. Dvorak to the bench, replaced by Saunders. You see Agnew with the warm-up shirt on on the Creighton bench. Shot clock down to six for the Red Storm. Hoppy picks up her dribble, so England's gonna have to create here. England working against Elger, a step back. Good job defensively for Elger to bother the shot and a shot clock violation for the Johnnies. Yes, and St. John's that time just a little bit out of control offensively, was not aware of what set they really wanted to run and great defense for the entire shot clock that time for Creighton. Four for 10 from downtown. And a foul on the entry pass against Kadeja Bailey as she was trying to body up against Carly Batchelor. Batchelor doing a nice job pinning Bailey behind her. And you can see Bailey had no chance and could not get around her to front her. And so it was forced to try to hit the ball from behind and getting caught for that foul by doing so. Her second and Bailey heads to the bench. Emma Nolan back on the floor for the Red Storm. And Gracie. Griglione returns, a sophomore from Iowa. Another Iowan on this Creighton roster. Creighton's got a hurry, shot clock is down to three. And a foul against Emma Nolan with two seconds on the shot clock as Elger didn't really have anywhere to go. And definitely not a call Coach Tartan all it wanted and only two seconds left. And Emma Nolan, she has to be smart. It's all about being aware of how much time is left on the clock. And that time was no need to put your hands and body check the offensive player. Joe Tartanella might have thought that was a little ticky tack for so late in the shot clock. He usually shows what he's thinking with his expressions. As Sarda's big first half continues, she's got nine points now. St. John's looking to run. Correa, nice catch, but couldn't finish. She was off balance. Here come the Blue Jays. Prior, little hesitation dribble. Outside for Saunders. Pryor loses her footing, but it's picked up by Elger. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Sloppy possession so far for Creighton, but they settle it down. Elder calls for a high screen from Griglione. Turns the corner, switches to the left hand, and is fouled by Correa. St. John's again bailing Creighton out, but have to love the move by Elger, the 5'7 senior. A little bit of hes hesitation right there, and found an open lane, and was smart enough to switch hands and use her inside left hand layup to scoop that and draw that foul. Shots for Olivia Elger, 76% from the line this season. And a good start to the second quarter for Creighton. Elger, after drawing that foul, hits both free throws and heads to the bench as Peyton Brodsky replaces her. And talk about the fact, Pat, that we have a tied game in the second quarter for a Creighton group that's missing their leading scorer, Agnew, who's one of the top scorers in the nation, not on the floor in Creighton. They have fought and they have stayed in this game in this first half, and I know Coach Flannery has to be proud so far of his girls. And Tatum Rembo hasn't played yet either. She averages 11 points per game. She hasn't played since December 20th. Now, we were told by the sports information director of Creighton that everybody was available for the game today. So Rembo available and Agnew available, but she's under the weather. Defense! 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 
Sarda wants the ball back. She's got the hot hand in the first half. Tough move inside, follows it up, and is fouled on the floor. It's going to go against, I'm not sure if that's against Alyssa Alston. No, it's against Leilani Correa. Yeah, Correa at the very end tried to fly in and get the rebound, but no one boxing out Sarda. And Sarda was able to get her own offensive rebound and drew that foul by Correa trying at the last minute to snap out of the hand. Joe Tardamella going small now as Unique Drake, a 5'7 freshman guard, checks in to replace the 6'1 forward, Emma Nolan. And Drake, a really good guard. It's only a freshman doesn't get many minutes because there's so many excellent St. John's guards in the roster, but Drake going to be a special player to watch as the year and as the, her career goes on here at St. John's. A freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Nice block by KB into the hands of Poppy, but she left her feet and turns it over. Fifth turnover for St. John's. Brodsky wanted it back. They dump it into Griglione in the post. Turnaround with that size advantage. And no harm, no foul on that trip for St. John's. KB only 5 foot 10, but the taller player on the floor right now for St. John's. And right there, you can see her stepping it up down low. Nice block and getting rebounds. Trying to do what she can with her height disadvantage. Meanwhile, on the other end, Alyssa Alston using her speed advantage against Gracie Griglione draws the foul on her. First on Griglione. Alston, a 78% free throw shooter. We saw this on Friday against Providence. Hitting free throws down the stretch was crucial for St. John's to seal that win over the Friars. Yeah, St. John's, they showed the world that they're not afraid to step up to the free throw line and knock some pressure shots down. And again, today you can see as well, the AR team has been working on their free throws in practice, Austin knocking down both. Back and forth first half, neither team is led by more than five. Alston's two free throws giving St. John's a two-point lead. Alston now guarding Sarda. Sarda trying to size her up, trying to get around her. Good job by Alston, but a tougher shot by Temi Sarda. Sarda making a lot of tough shots in this second quarter. And St. John's, they are staying with her and defending her, but she's still knocking them down. Alston tried to answer from behind the three-point line, but couldn't. So we're tied once again. Three-pointer off the mark from Sarda. Drake has a step on the defense. Wild shot comes up short. Drake took a hard fall. We'll see if she's okay. She is. Creighton has numbers. Good job defensively by KB to poke it out of bounds against the freshman Fryer. And that'll bring us to a timeout on the floor. All right. Tight game so far, 4.09 to go, second quarter. St. John's and Creighton all tied up. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. 
All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. enough right in front of the ref to get that offensive call. First player in the game into double figures, now with 12 points. Make it 13 after the friendly roll and a two-point lead for Creighton. Well, Creighton has certainly proven so far they are up for the task this afternoon without their top player, Jalen Agnew. As the shot clock dwindles, Drake loses control and it's stolen away by Pryor. Pryor came in early in the first quarter and really hasn't left the court. She's had that big of an impact. Cutting to the basket this time, finding a hole through the defense, couldn't finish though. It's poked out of bounds off of the Blue Jays. Over at Jim Flannery though by the Creighton bench, applauding the effort of his freshman guard, Dee Dee Pryor trying to extend that possession. KB trying to back in, throws it out of the double team. Good ball movement here. Really good ball movement here to an open hoppy from the wing and St. John's back on top. That was a long distance trifecta for the junior and Bob took her time, even better job offensively by St. John's to keep passing that ball around and find the open hoppy in the corner. Eight points today for Hoppy, 1,019 now for her career at St. John's after eclipsing the 1,000 point plateau on Friday. Long drawn out possession here for the Blue Jays. Olivia Elder going one on one with England behind the back, spinning around a couple of times and a tough shot, but did she get it off in time? They're gonna review this. They're gonna review this to see if she got it off before the shot clock expired. We'll talk about the effort just now, by, just now by Elger to get that shot off and knock it down. And England was staying with her that entire time, but that was just pure determination by Elger to get those two points. And hopefully it counts for her. 
Now you know this, you've played here and you've broadcasted a bunch of games here. The shot clock horn inside Karnaseka Arena is not loud at all. On Friday we had an issue too where they played for a couple of seconds after a shot clock violation before anybody knew that the buzzer had expired. That's right, and so it's important and for players to just be smart. And I say keep playing through the buzzer and let the ref blow the yes. horn and tell you that it's a stop or whatever. But good job by Elgar. I believe, let's take a look right here, Pat, and see if she got it off in time. Well, we got 2.29 left in the first half. And for now, a 30 to 29 Creighton lead over St. John's. And she did not get it off in time. So they went to the monitor, they called it immediately, they knew it was close. So take the points off the board. You can see Elgar not at all happy with that this determination because she did worked really hard to get that shot off and knock it down. And St. John's though, getting the stop and earning the possession. It was a tough shot she hit too. Quiet first half for Tiana England. Drake seeing some big minutes in this first half. Alston pulls up off the bounce, rolls around and in. St. John's up by three. Alyssa Alston with nine points to lead the way in this first half. Yeah, and if you notice, Correa has not been back on the floor. She's playing not at her, not 100% and trying to finish this first half out with Alston stepping it up and offensively. Foul inside against Quadasha Hoppy as Carly Batchelor went up against her. Batchelor, she saw the mismatch. She knew Hoppy only at five foot seven was guarding her six foot frame and that time doing a nice up and under and drawing enough contact for the foul. Back to your point, Leilani Correa in this game has looked like she's about a half a step off. Do you think that maybe she's still suffering from whatever effects of that illness she had on Friday? Absolutely. You can see she's not at, she was not at her best, but able to knock down a nice three to end that first quarter, but has not been back in this game since. Now she's still a scorer, and you know, scorer, scorer. A pure scorer for sure, Pat. No that matter how you guys player. feel. <laughs> Drake from the wing. KB battling for the offensive rebound. And the original call is St. John's possession, but now there's a foul called by our outside official. It's against Creighton. It's against Olivia Elger. There's Correa sitting and watching for now. You can see the towel around her neck, she slouched over forward and just probably also not happy that she can't be on the floor to help her team out as well as not feeling the best. So it was an over the back call against Olivia Elgar. And I'm not sure if our officials are going to take a second look at this play. Both teams are being sent back to their benches. And now they're being called back. So the first call was out of bounds off of St. John's. And then they called a personal foul on Via Elgar, and that appears to be what's going to stand right now. Jim Flannery protesting in his quiet, peaceful way. Has a great demeanor about him. Meanwhile, looked like Creighton was caught off guard on the inbound. England was wide open. And now a foul on the rebound as KB hit the deck hard. KB hitting the floor a lot in this first half and a tough, strong, powerful player she is. And I mentioned earlier, she's only five foot 10, but she's the tallest player on the floor right now for St. John's and having to play down low with the Creighton bigs. And right now, out hustling them in the paint. St. John's had to go without a lot of size down the stretch in that game against Providence. Raven Farley fouled out. Emma Nolan fouled out of that game. It was KB down the stretch against the Friars. Drake pulls up, line drive shot comes up short. 
Creighton looking to push after a long time, or what seemed like a long time on defense. Open look for Saunders, too strong. England skies for the rebound. Pushing the ball out in front of her. Gets it back from Hoppy over to Alston. A deep three for Alyssa Alston. Saunders corrals it. And that's a shot off the trail that Alston usually makes Pat, but she's been a bit cold these last couple of minutes. Final 45 seconds of the second quarter. The game that has been tied three times has seen five lead changes. Neither team is led by more than six points. That's a tough shot for Olivia Elger, and that was in plenty of time ahead of the shot clock. Yes, Elger really making some impressive pull-up jumpers with the defender in her face, and talk about her offensive skills she's showing us today. Our sixth lead change of this first half. Shot clock. Under 10 seconds. Hasn't been shy about putting it up, and an off. Drove to the basket. Temi Sarda, who's had a terrific first half on both ends of the floor, takes the charge. And Drake just cannot catch a break on the offensive end. And we mentioned she doesn't get many minutes, and she's been really confident so far in this first half. Has been attacking, just things not going her way. Quick inbound for Dee Dee Pryor. Two seconds on the clock. And Brodsky did not get the shot off in time. Doesn't matter anyway. And that brings us to the end of the first half. So six lead changes in the first half as the teams head to the locker room. Great, looking for a split of their weekend in the New York metropolitan area. A 32 to 31 lead over St. John's. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Back here at Carnesecca, I'm creating a 30 lead over St. John's. Biggie's fast break. 
Megan Caffrey and Ashley Leotis breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. And on this week's episode, Megan was joined by the reigning Big East Player of the Week, Marquette's Selena Lott. The Marquette Golden Eagles are 3-2 in Big East play, coming off of a 2-0 weekend beating at St. John's and Seton Hall, as I'm now joined by the Big East Player of the Week, Selena Lott. Selena, your team lost your first two conference games. However, you've now won three straight Big East games. Head coach Megan Duffy said your execution has been different throughout these. What has been the difference in your execution? Um, honestly, it's just determination and we all have to stay humble. Like our teammates, it's like a, a player led team. So our coaches try to stay out of it as much. And then we just had to get an extra work just to be better. You had a career high 34 points in your win over St. John's offensively. How are you able to have so much production? Honestly, I don't even see it as much as my coaches do. So my coaches like give me highlights of like when I can attack or like whenever I come off on the bench. My coach, uh, Skeet, will tell me and be like, this is what you have. Like You have your little pull-up game. You have the three. You can drive. So I just take her advice whenever. Head coach Megan Duffy also mentioned the fact that this season a lot of teammates have been stepping up. When you look to your game against Seton Hall on Sunday, Lauren Van Kloon didn't have as much of an offensive game as she usually does. And then you have freshman Cameron Taylor stepping up with her first career double-double. How much is that a testament to what this team is about this season? Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the beauty of our team. Like, we all can do different parts, and we all have our talents. But it's just when one's down, one has to step up. So everybody knows their role, and just attack it. Selena, just saying it right there, everyone knows their role. What is your role on the team this season? I would just say be more of a vocal leader and, like, trying to tell people, like, what positions to be in on defense. And then everybody kind of has the same role. We all tell each other what to do. We just have to take that into consideration. You're one of the upperclassmen this year, and you also come back with a lot of experience. You started on last year's team amongst all of that high-powered talent. How has that experience helped you into this year with the leadership that you have on the court? Um, it definitely has helped because like, I knew like how other teams played and what we had to like look forward to like scouting-wise. But everybody was ready. Who is the funniest on the team? Funniest on the team? Probably Altia. Ooh. Why yeah. is she so funny? She's interesting. interesting. She's different. She's so different. She loves to fish. She loves country music. But, like, at the same time, like, I don't know. She'll just always make a side comment that will make you laugh in the wrong times. <laughs> so she loves country music at, at practice, at a home game, on your playlist. Is there at least one country song that we can expect to be on that playlist? Probably not on my playlist, but definitely on hers. <laughs> What's your playlist like? What kind of music we have in that? Um, I listen more of like hip hop and R and B. Favorite pregame song? Probably "Whoa" right now by Lil Baby. Can you sing it for us a little bit? Oh. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't know all the lyrics. <laughs> fair. That is very, very fair. <laughs> Selena, thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you. You're watching St. John's Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in. We coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up.
All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Arena, Pat O'Keefe, Sky Lindsay, 32 to 31, Creighton, a one point lead over St. John's at halftime. Close game, three ties, eight lead changes. And Creighton really doing a good job without their top player, Jalen Edgar. That's right, a back and forth battle has been, and kudos to Creighton. I know Coach Frawley is very happy with his group. They are doing an amazing job of staying in this game, and that's because of their other guard that's been doing a great job, Sarda. She has right now 13 points in the first half. She's been trying to do a little bit of everything for her group to keep them in this game. But Bailey, St. John, they have a lot of offensive scorers that can put the ball on the floor and score offensively. But Creighton hanging with them. As we show you some of these highlights from the first half, Alyssa Alston for St. John's had nine points. She's St. John's top scorer so far. Leilani Correa back from an illness on Friday trying to get into the flow. That was a big three just at the end of the first quarter as St. John's ended the first into the second on an 11 to nothing run. But right now a 32 to 31 lead. Creighton on top of the Red Storm. St. John's looking for a second straight win. Take a look at the halftime stats. Three points shooting about even for both teams. Both teams doing a good job at the free throw line. Really, this is what we would expect from halftime stats because this is a very closely played game. Yeah, it's a nice evenly game so far and it's going to go down to the very end. I can already tell you that, Pat. Sarder with those 13 points leading all scorers and Alston giving St. John's a lift in the first half for the second consecutive game. Alyssa Alston leading the way for the Johnnies with nine. Second half coming up from Carneseca Arena. 32 to 31, Creighton at your halftime score. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Conference men's and women's basketball teams in recognition of the incomparable impact that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made in his quest for national unity and social justice are wearing shooting shirts before their games this weekend that read, We Cannot Walk Alone. Here now from student athletes on the impact Dr. King has made on their lives. Dr. Martin Luther King had a huge impact on me. He just made me believe no matter what you do, anything is possible. I think the legacy that he put in place means a lot to me because I always think about 
where we came from as people of color, as athletes of color, and I just try to make sure that whatever I'm doing now in the present is going to set up those for the future. Being in the Big East is so diverse. Being at DePaul University is so diverse. So to come along and to share our talents is one of the messages that Martin Luther King shared with us, that we can all come together and be as one. His willingness to sacrifice himself and you know fight for others, that goes a long way for the future and anybody who wants to stand up for, for change and equality. The Big East Conference and member schools champion excellence by embracing respect and diversity while striving for a culture of inclusion and equity. Be inclusive. Be inclusive. watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Welcome back to Carnes at Rico, where it has been neck and neck for this first half, 32 to 31, with the Johnnies falling behind. I had a chance to see Coach Ramallah at halftime. He says his offense just needs to be patient, work the ball movement, and they're going to be fine heading into the second half. Now the Blue Jays, well, their players are working on substitutes, and they're getting more minutes. Something that they're really going to have to work on. All right, Anna. Anna Dominguez working the sidelines for us today. We're set to go here in the second half right in front of us. Creighton will throw the ball in with Chloe Dwarak. And we are underway. A 32 to 31 lead for the Blue Jays. And Temi Sarda with the ball in her hands had that big first half with 13 points. Creighton playing without its leading scorer, leading rebounder. Preseason all Big East performer, Jalen Agnew. And out of the break, Rachel Saunders, who shoots a 38% clip from downtown this season, gives Creighton a four point lead. And Saunders, now her second three on the game. The 5'9 sophomore showing us her long distance perimeter ability in this game. And nice start for her for the second half. Hoppy trying to answer and a tough shot along the baseline for the Red Storm. And Wadasha Hoppy now into double figures with 10. So back to back buckets to begin the third quarter and the hot stretch continues for both teams as Olivia Elger knocks it down from the top of the key. Creighton a five point lead, tying their largest of the game. KB getting caught that time with her hand down. As the saying goes, Pat, hand down, man down, and big shot for Elger to knock it down in front of her face. KB on the offensive end, kicks it outside to England, puts it on the floor, and is fouled driving to the hoop by Elger. First foul of the second half for either team. St. John's will trigger it in from underneath the basket. There's Jalen Agnew. A thousand points, 600 rebounds. Actually, 1,347 career points for Creighton and 606 rebounds. The 15th player in their program history to reach those plateaus. 
a lot of production on the Blue Jays bench. Not feeling well. We haven't seen her yet today. Sarda has helped pick up the slack for Jim Flannery's team. Sarda working against Toppy. Elger trying to make it two in a row, couldn't. Long rebound to KB. KB getting lucky that time. Elger, someone you cannot afford to take your eye off of, especially when she's standing behind a three-point line. KB thought about it from the top of the key, working against Elger, has it poked away. Austin with nine points to lead St. John's in the first half, turns the corner, and she's got 11. And she's able to turn that corner so well because Austin gets low with her dribble. She gets extremely low to the floor and finds a way to turn the corner nice and sharp for an open layup. Creighton 12 and 5, 4 and 2 in the Big East, tied for third place coming into this game. Coming off an 82 to 70 loss on Friday at Seton Hall, in which they were blitzed. The Pirates scoring 32 points in the first quarter of that game and a good job by Elger coming from behind to force the jump ball. It will stay with St. John's, but a heads up play by Olivia Elger. Now time KB, that's because she brought the ball down low after getting that rebound. You have to keep the ball up because you never know if they're smart defenders like Elger coming from behind to get their hands on that ball as he just did. Dee Dee Pryor just checked back in for Creighton. Little used coming into this game, but played big minutes in the first half off the bench. 16 minutes at the point guard position. And Sky, I know you liked what she did in the first half for this team. Absolutely, Pryor. She went two for three in that first half. And a nice first half she did, gave great minutes. And you can see she's only a freshman, but she has a lot of confidence and pays a lot of heart when she's on the floor. And getting a big opportunity here today. Shot clock under 10, Austin trying to create. Nolan came out at her first three of the game. Shot clock down to three. Nolan's got to fire away from the wing, and KB just tossed Pryor to the floor and will pick up the personal foul, her first. Pryor, she's feisty. She doesn't mind getting down low, and you can see that time just annoying KB, trying to box KB out, and KB out of frustration, really just flinging her over. She came off the bench, and other than Temi Sarda, who hasn't left the floor all game, Pryor played the most minutes in the first half for Flannery. Here's Saunders looking to pull up. Pryor keeps the ball moving. Sarda along the baseline and traveled. And that time St. John's defensively just switching on every single handoff, every screen switching and Sarda unable to create and find anything on that baseline getting called for the travel. Creighton a one point lead at halftime. They've led by as many as five in this game. This is away from the ball. Nolan mixed up underneath with Saunders. And it's gonna go against Creighton and Rachel Saunders. Second on Saunders. Second on the Blue Jays. Not a lot of free throws in this game at all. That's right, the rest have been letting them play and both teams just playing Extremely smart defensively with a under control with a lot of poise on the defensive end. Tough pass from Hoppy. KB does handle it. The finger roll inside and a nice touch. St. John's back within one. KB, you can see she was determined to knock that down. A bit out of control, but able to get the nice touch to finish that layup. KB trying to get her hand in there to poke the ball away defensively against Saunders. Now it's Nolan matched up, knocks it away into the hands of Hoppy, trying to beat everybody down court and does. St. John's back on top by a point. And that's what St. John's is going to have to do. Get their hands in there, try to get some steals and deflections against this under control offensive Creighton team that we mentioned earlier, they do not turn the ball over much. Now chance of defense from the Carneseca Arena crowd. Ninth lead change of the game. KB coming from the weak side, trying to slap it away. Saunders for three. And an offensive rebound for Pryor. Knocked out of bounds. 16 on the shot clock. Timeout on the floor. So Creighton extended to a five point lead. St. John storms right back. And the Red Storm on top, 39-38.
St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Back here out of the timeout, St. John's a one point lead, three ties, nine lead changes so far this afternoon in Queens. Got a feeling we're not done with that. Good defensive hold there for Alicia Kaby. It'll remain with Creighton with five seconds on the shot clock. Pryor trying to get it in, finally does to Sarda. She's got to throw it up there with two seconds to shoot, does and gets the roll and Creighton back on top, courtesy of our 10th lead change of the game. Now St. John's offense still hasn't missed in this third quarter. Now five for five from the field. Yeah, Nolan, another big three for the freshman and that will take a lot of pressure off the guards of St. John's if Nolan can continue to have that confidence to knock down those threes and force the Creighton bigs to step out and defend her. That's an element that the St. John's program hasn't had in recent years, a center, a six foot one player being able to step out and hit a three from downtown. And it's major because it really does open up the paint and allow the guards to get more lanes and ability to drive to the hoop if they can get some post players on, on the defensive team to step out and defend their posts around the perimeter. Foul call is against Alyssa Alston, her second, and the second against the Red Storm. Bailey got a hand on it. Elgar pulls up, rolls around no good, tapped right back to her though. Yeah. 
Sarda will have to create again. Now she gives it off to Saunders with two seconds to shoot. Saunders against KB and was fouled and no signal yet. Are we going to count the basket too? They're going to have a discussion first. A couple of things going on there. Was it continuation, number one? Number two, did she get the shot off in time as the shot clock was expiring? Well, they're going to go to the monitor, but they haven't given a signal yet on what the actual original call was. Rolling on the floor is a good bad game. So the ruling on the floor, count the basket plus the foul but that's assuming she got it off before the shot clock. So this is the second time this game that we've had to go to the monitor to see if there was a shot clock violation. That's right, I know Elgar could not believe once again this potentially her tough basket could not count. And KB though, she has to be disciplined. She could, she did basically bail Elgar out and fouled her at the very last minute and not a smart defensive play by KB. So it is continuation. That was one of the questions. That was answered. All right, let's see this. Let's see the shot clock down to one. It's very close, as you would expect, because they are reviewing it. Here we go. It's a difficult angle to see in real time. Before it was Elgar, this time it's Rachel Saunders who got the basket to go. The question is, will it count or not? There's our best look, and according to that, it does not look she got it off in time. Good job by our crew slowing that down for us. But what I'm seeing there is zero on the shot clock and the ball still in the hands of Saunders. Here's another look at that. Ball still in her hand. Still in her hand, zero on the shot clock. So if the officials are seeing what I'm seeing here, this should not count. And that's the second time this game that Creighton has scored as the shot clock has expired and it's been as close as a whisper. There's a long conversation. Wow. Well, the officials saw that completely differently than I did. Basket counts. Our official Geraldine Smith informing us over here at the table. So Saunders will have a chance to finish the three-point play and give Creighton a lead back. And she does. Fourth lead change of this quarter alone with three and a half to play. Gutsy effort for Creighton so far playing without Jalen Agnew. They go inside to KB. Nice kick out to Bailey. And Pryor, all 5'7 of her grabbing that rebound. And that's not the shot I'm sure Coach Taramella wanted out of that set, but KB did a good job. Bailey was wide open, but really not known her perimeter shooting. KB guarding Elder. Elder calling for it back. Shot clock winding down again. This time it's Sarda. And Nolan grabs the rebound. Hoppy pulls up near the foul line, too strong. Another rebound for Pryor. Great job by her on the boards. Dee Dee Pryor has seven rebounds in this game. She had four all season coming into this. Backdoor cut, Sarda waits out the defense, Creighton up by three. And beautiful pass by Bachelor to see Sarda cutting towards the hoop and might be one of the easier baskets Sarda has scored today. Sarda's had to work very hard for her 17 points. Now 
as she sprints into the front court. And there's a foul against Alyssa Alston, who can't believe it, her third. And Alston's a player that sometimes Pat finds herself in foul trouble, and she's such a great offensive player for St. John, and defensive player, but a lot of games is forced to come off the floor because of her foul trouble, and that time an unnecessary foul for sure. It was away from the ball. So that's also the fourth team foul against St. John's. So Creighton in the bonus for the final minute and a half of this third quarter. Elgert nearly loses the handle and carried. A lot of dribbling for Olivia Elgert, turns the ball over. And that's because that time KB just in her face while guarding her and did not allow Elgert to do whatever she wants to do dribbling the ball just now. It's actually a personal foul against Olivia Elgert, her third on the push-off. England and Hoppy working together here. A good look for Hoppy. KB crashing the offensive glass, spins free, and she'll have a chance to tie it at the foul line. And talk about the hops on KB. Only five foot ten, getting up there to snatch that rebound down, and nice spin to get the layup up and get the and one. Right here, hustling, grabbing that rebound, and smart, crafty spin at the right time for that layup. Then we are tied once again with just over a minute to play here in the third quarter. St. John seven and one on its home floor this season. Creighton four and four, a very good road record. Elgar pulls up from the right side and cans it. And it's yet, a two, they're gonna review it. And yet another bucket by Elgar that was not easy. She's just leading the way with the toughest shots of the game that she's made so far today. And that time, just again, hands down, man's down. Elgar will make you pay. You do not contest and respect her three point or perimeter shooting. 32% from downtown on the season. Olivia Elgar with nine points now, right at her season average. And we're due to review that last shot by Olivia Elgar. There's 44 and a half seconds left. And they're probably going to take a look at that at the end of the quarter. So right now it stands as a two pointer. Creighton could get a third point out of it. England goes two for two. Those are our first two points of the game. Both of these teams putting on a free throw shooting display. We haven't missed yet. Game is tied for now, pending the review of the Elgar two-pointer. Elgar right down the lane, has it blocked by KB out of bounds. Four seconds on the shot clock, it will stay with Creighton. A nice timing by KB to get that clean block that time. Thrown into some open space, England chases it down and is fouled going to the basket. Talk about the racing match that time to see who would get that loose ball, but England showing us she was the quicker of the other two to get that ball and find a way to draw some contact for a foul. And meanwhile, Olivia Elger, who's had such a good game with nine points and three rebounds and has really had a big impact, picks up her fourth personal foul. Creighton already shorthanded. Elger remains on the floor for now. Fifteen point seven on the clock. Elger into the front court. She's got to go. Two seconds. One second. Doesn't get off a shot. Boy, 
Elger likes to wind that clock down as far as she can. Wound it down too far that time. For now, it's a 48-47 St. John's lead over Creighton. They will take a look at the jumper that Elger hit towards the end of the third quarter. We head to the fourth from Karnaseka. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Felipe Lopez, five-year NBA veteran, one of the biggest names in St. John's men's basketball history, and Deshina Stevens of the women's basketball program, Sky, I know a close friend and former teammate of yours. Yeah, Deshina Stevens definitely was a lot of fun to play with, back from 2008 to 2011, she graduated 2012, and Definitely deserves this honor and a great player and will go down in history here at St. John's University. Her senior season helped lead St. John's to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Tournament. The year before that, when you and her were teammates, you guys teamed up to make a decent run to the second round of the NCAA Tournament too. Yes, and I tell you what, Pat, a lot of that was because we had her on our squad. <laughs> so congratulations to Felipe, to Sheena, and all of the St. John's Athletics Hall of Fame inductees who were announced at halftime. You see the score, there was a change during the break. They reviewed Olivia Elger's jumper towards the end of that third quarter, determined it was a three-pointer. So we begin the fourth appropriately enough in such a close ball game, tied at 48. Leilani Correa, meanwhile, is tagged with a personal foul in the first 10 seconds of the fourth. And then an opening inside for Saunders, and she'll have a chance at a three-point play. And that was a beautiful inbounds execution, and nice job by Pryor to find her teammate Saunders, who has a nice pin back for the open and one layup. Dee Dee Pryor, see her in the center of your screen, number three, a freshman from Urbandale, Iowa, really coming into her own today. Kind of a breakout performance for her in this Creighton program. So three-point play good for Saunders. Creighton has a three-point lead early here in the fourth. KB has it poked away into the hands of Pryor. Tenth turnover for St. John's. Pokes it away, shot clock winding down again. They've got to fire it up. 
and there's a collision as the shot clock expired. And this could just be a brutal call against St. John's as the shot clock was expiring. A desperation heave for the Blue Jays could result in three free throws. Sky, if you're KB, you can't let that happen. Right, and KB, you know, she has to be smart. Those buzzer beater shots, one second left, and sometimes it's just best to let the player get the shot off and just hope she misses. And that time, KB being playing, playing her defense and overdoing it a bit and getting called for another foul towards the end. And I saw you want the shot clock. has had a lot of highlights Ooh, today in this got game. another one because they're reviewing this play to see if the foul was committed before the shot clock expired. So Joe Tartamella's got his team surrounding him, looking for a sweep of this weekend homestand after the Providence win on Friday morning. A nip and tuck game here against a very tough, very game Creighton team, even without its best player in Jalen Agnew. And St. John's will have some time off after this one. Their next game is a week from today, next Sunday, when they travel across the Hudson River to Seton Hall for a game against the Pirates inside Walsh Gymnasium. So the call on the floor is confirmed. Olivia Elger is very crafty as you look at the Red Storm upcoming schedule. So she gets three free throws out of this with the shot clock expiring. And this could be a huge swing in this game. One more coming for Elger, a 76% foul shooter on the season. And Creighton, a team with only two girls that average in double figures, and one of them not even on the floor, right now have three girls in double figures. That just shows how much they've all stepped up offensively with their star player, Agnew, out. Elger only goes one for three there. Correa, nice, pretty drive to the basket. Johnny's back in the two. Defense has certainly held this high scoring St. John's offense in check. Pryor misfires from deep. England looking to push the pace. It's inside the paint. And a foul against the Blue Jays on the floor against Rachel Saunders. Correa corrals the inbounds and she's fouled by Pryor. So that's two quick team fouls against Creighton a minute and a half in. And here's a tight game and you can see the refs are going to start really looking and digging down and looking for those holds even off the ball. And so both groups have to play smart defensively. You don't want to give up too many free throws. St. John's has three team fouls. Free throw shooting has been on point for both teams. It could be a factor down the stretch. And here's another foul against Creighton as Correa came skying in for the offensive rebound. Yeah, Correa for a moment just now looking like her old self when she was 100% healthy. That time finding a boost of energy to fly up there and snatch down a rebound of her own. Fourth foul on Saunders. Foul trouble starting to mount for Jim Flannery's team. She has four, Elger has four. They're already shorthanded without Agnew, and a crafty shot there is no good by England. Knocked out of bounds off of St. John's. Reverse layup, nice idea by England. A layup you think you should have made, but unable to make it. A nice defense by Creighton. And they overturned the call as the officials had a discussion. You know what's funny? I'm looking down the sideline here, Sky, and I see St. John's men's coach, Mike Anderson. And He's signaling St. John's ball as if he were coaching the game himself. He's courtside with his wife, Marshita, and Felipe Lopez has just joined them. And you think Anderson is coaching this game the way he's reacting to these close calls. You have to love the support when you see the men's basketball head coach on, in the stands watching the women's basketball team. 
They had a tough loss at Madison Square Garden yesterday against 18th ranked Seton Hall. KB with the shot clock winding down. Pryor grabs another rebound. And that's going to be the fourth team foul against St. John's against England. Just the first on England. Temi Sard has been the star today for Creighton with 17 points, playing Iron Woman basketball, hasn't come off the floor. Backdoor cut, Elger couldn't handle it though. And St. John's pounces on the loose ball. Man, St. John's getting extremely lucky that time that Elger could not hold on to that one. So Alston handling point guard duties now with Tiana England on the bench. Correa pulls up just inside the arc. Good rotation, a little too strong. Creighton really slowing down the pace, nursing a two-point lead here in the fourth, under seven minutes to play. And that's what it's all gonna go down to, Pat. Who can control the tempo of this game? And right now, I would say Creighton's been doing a great job keeping the pace of the game under control how they want it to be. You see every opportunity St. John's has to push, they're really trying. And the Creighton, you could see, getting back on defense each and every time, not allowing St. John's to score many easy buckets today in this game. Hoppy, St. John's leading scorer today with a dozen. Make it 14 and we're all tied up. Poppy loves going on that left side, going strong, and when she's going in that left side off the handoff from KB, she's almost unstoppable. Jim Flannery calling out the offensive set for the Blue Jays. 19th all-time meeting between these two programs. Pryor comes up well short. I don't know how close the series has been. They've played 18 times. Each team has won nine games. You have to also remember Pryor might be getting tired, not used to this many minutes. And usually the pace is at the liking of Creighton. No team has scored more than 80 points in a contest in this series. And the interesting thing is they've actually met five times in the postseason. And Creighton hasn't been a member of the Big East Conference that long. St. John's is 4-1 and one against the Blue Jays in the postseason. Wow, so St. John, these two teams are very familiar with each other even before coming into the Big East Conference. Who's gonna come up with the big plays down the stretch of this game as we approach the five minute mark in the fourth quarter in a tie ball game? Creighton gave up a season high 82 points on Friday at Seton Hall, the defensive effort much better today. KV got a piece of it, but a foul as well. Blue Jays will be shooting free throws from here on out. Foul is against Alicia Cavey. Cavey's fourth. She's very close to a double-double with nine points and nine rebounds. Peyton Brodsky, who tied her career high on Friday at Seton Hall, 69% from the line. A one for two trip, Creighton back on top. Well, Joe Tartamella is gonna try and sneak some minutes on the bench for Alicia Cavey with those four fouls. He sends Tiana England back in. Brodsky coming off a big 13 point performance on Friday against Seton Hall. Alston was open momentarily, gives it off to Hoppy instead. Hoppy, with a defender close to her, rolls around, and Brodsky clears the board. Knocked out of bounds, off the hands of Correa. And that'll bring us to a timeout on the floor. 
Creighton holding on to a one point lead over St. John's. Open inside Welcome the back to Parnasaka Arena. The Big East Championship. Today we cross the finish line. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Involved in another close one, the Blue Jays holding on to a 53 to 52 lead. As you look at Creighton's upcoming schedule, their next game will be on Friday when they're back home to play Xavier, a 7 p.m. Central Time tip that you can catch on the Big East Digital Network. And then Butler also visits DJ Sokol Arena next weekend. Out of the timeout. Sarda gets free inside and pushes Creighton's lead back to three. Sarda just showing us she's just too quick for Bailey. Bailey cannot guard her and stay with her that time. Easy layup for the, for the junior. Alston couldn't answer. Rebound is grabbed by Batchelor. And Scott, you pointed to Sarda immediately at the beginning of the game when it looked like Jalen Agnew wasn't going to have a big role in this as somebody who needed to step up, and she certainly has. Absolutely, Sarda has stepped up for sure, but not even just Sarda. I'm impressed by Elger as well and Bachelor Pryor. A really a, a complete team effort so far for Creighton today. Another 20 seconds on the shot clock. Brodsky couldn't finish inside. Golden opportunity there for Creighton. We'll see if St. John's can take advantage. England resets the offense down to three and a half to play here at St. John's. Alicia KB on the bench with four fouls is actually sitting at the scorer's table waiting to check back in. Hoppy splits two defenders, flips it up there, no good. And Brodsky is there for another board. Peyton Brodsky with four rebounds off the bench. Ball in the hands of Temi Sarda. Inside, Brodsky has a size advantage, but a great job by Alston, and then to draw the foul against Brodsky. It's the fourth team foul against Creighton, so no free throws yet. 
and Alston with three fouls and took a, a gamble that time, but was able to get that hit off, that still get that steal cleanly. Sky points have been at a premium in this fourth quarter. St. John's five points through the first seven plus minutes of the fourth. And that's how that shows you that St. John's just without that's why you can see Coach Tardamel put Correa back on the floor. He had no choice because their offense was slowing down. They weren't getting as many buckets and having no choice but to put Correa back on the floor and see if she can get her game done. Well, they needed that one. Tiana England from the corner knocks down a big three-pointer, and we are all tied at 55. It's the seventh tie of the game. And England not known for her three-point shooting, something she's been working on in the offseason, and a tough one in the corner for the senior. Jim Flannery calls a timeout from the Creighton bench. 55 all, 218 to play. Big mid-season game here in the Big East Conference here from Carneseca Arena. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Points at a premium, Sky. Both teams really having trouble getting anything going offensively. And right now, it's the last final stretch of this fourth quarter. They're going to have to get their offense going. And nice layup that time by Correa. Let's see if she can get some more layups in for St. John and Coach Tardamella as it comes down to the stretch. A moment ago, Tiana England from the corner, her first field goal of the game, a three-pointer to tie this at 55. So out of the timeout that was called by Jim Flannery, see what he draws up and a golden opportunity inside missed by Carly Batchelor and then knocked out of bounds. KB that time still has to play smart. We have to remember she has four fouls on the floor right now and she's definitely been getting hit and banged up today. And 
that time from her hustle, earning a trip to the foul line. Yeah, foul against Bachelor after she missed that layup. Flannery had the right play dialed up out of that timeout. They just couldn't finish. And those, those layups are going to matter right now in these last two minutes and two seconds. Every open opportunity for a shot, they must hit both squads. Especially in a quarter in which each team only has seven points. Now eight for St. John's as Katie puts the Red Storm back on top. St. John's has led for less than 11 minutes of this game. Creighton's had the lead for nearly 22 minutes, but it's St. John's on top right now by two. Final two minutes. Temi Sarda has led the way for Creighton today. She does not have the ball right now. Looking to get it back from Elger. Elger wants to go against Alston. Step back from Olivia Elger off the mark. Shot clock is down to two. Sarda rolling around no good. A third opportunity for Creighton, no. Correa chases down the rebound and a dangerous outlet pass is handled by Kaby. Creighton has had chances. These last two possessions haven't been able to take advantage. Yeah, and that was a huge rebound for Correa. So in John needed her to snatch that one down and big time rebound for the, for the freshman. England had that huge three. Now a great layoff for Correa inside. St. John's pushing its lead to four. England, so much fun playing with her. I can imagine with her being the point guard. And all you have to do is have your hands ready to catch those passes and she'll get you some easy layups. Timeout Creighton again with 55 seconds to play. St. John's on a seven to nothing run to take a 59-55 lead. So back to the huddle, both teams go. You see the score, 59-55 St. John's. Let's talk more about Tiana England. I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a quiet game for her, especially on the offensive end, but in this fourth quarter, she hit the biggest shot, that three from the corner, and then the biggest assist right there to Correa. And that just shows the type of player she is. The fact that she hasn't scored all game, but still had the confidence to even take that shot in the corner, Pat, is huge. And this time, we know she's a crafty ball handler. That time, two double crossovers, and able to keep her head up amongst that crowd and find Correa open for the layup. I don't even think Correa knew she was open. St. John's has gotten the lifts from the return of Leilani Correa with seven points now after that layup. So after the Creighton timeout, they'll inbound from right in front of their bench. Elders had some magic going this afternoon. We'll see if she has any more. Brodsky calling for the ball to drive against KB blocked from behind with 10 seconds on the shot clock. KB's just been on the money today with timing those shots. And timing is key because, again, she has four fouls. And so if she gets the timing off, that could be her fifth. Second block shot for KB. Sardis three is no good. Correa fouled going up for the rebound. Two free throws coming for the St. John's freshman. Another big rebound for the freshman who's not playing 100% healthy, but getting down there, getting scrappy, boxing out and snatching down those rebounds. But KB, the precision, the perfect timing for these block shots, and that one was from behind. So Correa to the line for two. Leads St. John's with 86% shooting clip from the line. Johnny's trailed this game 55-52 before the England three. They have now scored the last eight points. England almost an offensive rebound into the hands of Pryor. And another timeout called by Creighton. And they will have one remaining after this. Creighton getting lucky that time. Almost allowed England to snatch that rebound down, but earning the position, the possession, keeping that ball, their hands on the ball. And getting a chance to now draw the play. After the England three, Jim Flannery called timeout, had that great play design in the huddle. It resulted in a wide open layup attempt for Carly Batchelor and she just missed. And since then, things have really swung in St. John's direction. It's 
all about execution right now. And I know Coach Flattery is going to write up another great play, but they must execute it. And they're going to get a good shot off, but it's all about can you make it under this pressure. Stay tuned after the game. Anna Dominguez will have an interview with a member of the winning team. 35.3 seconds remain to decide who that will be. Still a five-point game, and it is great basketball. Both teams in the double bonus, or the bonus, as it is now in women's college hoops. Terry Sarda, a little inbound, not a lot of help back there. Fryer quickly into the front court against Correa, driving right at her. Knocked away and stolen by Alston. And they have to foul Alyssa Alston. Sarda gives the foul, it's just her first. But St. John's gonna have a chance to extend its lead from the free throw line. In that time, our prior just a freshman mistake. And wasn't sure was she gonna go coast to coast for the layup for herself, but decided to try to pass the ball behind her. And Alston, she's a smart redshirt senior. She was waiting for that pass from the freshman. Alston's second straight game had a big first half for St. John's with nine points before halftime. And makes it a six point game. Still a two possession game. St. John's has scored the last nine. Brodsky for three and we're down to a three point game. And Jim Flannery uses his final timeout from the Creighton bench. Huge three by Brodsky. Again, KB just not alert that time and allowing those forwards to take the three-point shot. She's, KB, you can see, just does not believe in the shot, but Brodsky's showing us, you better believe it. I'm gonna knock it down and leave me open. Let's give Creighton a lot of credit here, playing this afternoon without their top player, Jalen Agnew. This has been a tight game throughout. Creighton has actually led closely for most of the afternoon. Just a real pretty effort for this Creighton team on the road. Looks like both KB and Correa, neither one of them really watching Brodsky that time. But again, a huge three and keeping this game close. This game is not over by any means for Creighton. Well, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. St. John's was able to seal their win on Friday over Providence by hitting their free throws down the stretch. If they want to go two for two this weekend, they've got to do the same thing here now. We figure Flannery will look to put them on the free throw line, especially considering that Creighton is now out of timeouts. Joe Tartamella, meanwhile, has three timeouts at his disposal for St. John's. And before the Brodsky three, St. John's was on a 9-0 run, and Tartamella electing to use one of those three timeouts before we resume action. Coach Tartamella Pat, really using up his timeouts <laughs> now at the end. And you know, I understand he wants to make sure that his team is focused. They understand the game plan. He knows this is a big time game and this game is within hand's reach. They have a chance to compete and win this game against a team that we mentioned earlier have been receiving votes for a top 25 ranking these past two weeks in a row. With or without Jalen Agnew, still one of the top teams in the Big East Conference. This would be a big win for St. John's and a big weekend for St. John's. They got off to a good start winning their first three conference games, then a three-game losing streak. That included the tough road trip to DePaul and to Marquette. So there was three and three coming into Friday, a win over Providence and a chance for a second straight here now. But they're 18.3 seconds away and just a three-point lead. So we've got a one-possession game. England to throw it in. They get it to Hoppy right back to Tiana England. St. John's playing hot potato right now. Creighton chasing them around, unable to give the foul. Six seconds have gone off already. Seven seconds go off before they could even give a foul. And better yet for St. John's, they had to foul Pradash and Hoppy. They almost shot Creighton to not try to foul KB when KB had the ball in her hands. But KB able to get it out of her hands quick enough to get the ball back to Hoppy, who showed us in that game against Providence. She can walk up to this free throw line with ice in her veins and knock it down. 81% from the line this season. 
And that's big because that makes it a two possession game. Again, Creighton out of timeouts. So whatever happens on this free throw, they've got to push it up the court. Big free throws for Hoppy. Five point lead for the Red Storm. Sarda sprints it across the midcourt line. Kicks it back out. Saunders, a three off the mark. Three seconds as Alston grabs the rebound. Flattery saying back off. And St. John's has swept the weekend here on its home floor. And what a huge weekend this has been for St. John's here at Karnasaka Arena. Another big win for Coach Tardamala, but amazing game by Creighton and Coach Flannery. Without Agnew, they truly all came together and played very hard. So St. John's improves to five and three in the Big East. They jump over Creighton in the standings as the Blue Jays fall to four and three. Red Storm now 12 and seven overall. Creighton falls to 12 and six. Final score from Queens, St. John's 63 and Creighton 58. When we come back, we'll hear from one of the stars of the game. Actually, we're not gonna take a break. We're gonna talk to her right now. Kwadasha Hoppy standing by with Anna Dominguez. Same. All right, we're here with Kadasha Hobby. Now, this game was neck and neck, a deep full game. How were you guys able to pull this off in the last few minutes? You know, coach just said keep going to the next play, you know, play till the buzzer ends. And we just played hard the whole time until it's the end. And then you ended this game with 16 points at the half. I spoke to coach. He said you guys needed to be more patient on offense. How were you guys able to execute that? Yeah, we honed in on our possessions and, you know, made sure that they were good shots. And, uh, you know, the good shots led to us have a good trench and defense and everything just came around from our shot selection. Now, after today's game, you guys are now 5-2 and two in conference. How big is this win for you guys moving forward? Very big, very big. Um, every weekend is big for us. We just got to win the next two. So this was a great weekend, um, being able to win both of them. Congrats. All right, back to you, Pat. Anna, thanks a lot. Kodasha Hoppy, those two big free throws to help seal the win for St. John's and they are victorious on their home floor today. So that'll do it for our coverage. From my partner, Sky Lindsay, Anna Dominguez, our producer, director, KJ Hammond, our entire BEDN crew. 63 to 58, the final score, St. John's over Creighton. So long from Queens. Five, four,